Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about freelancing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, if your goal is to become a freelancer, is it better to be a front-end developer? So this is a good question. My short answer is going to be maybe, but mostly no. So the reason why I say this is because when you work as a freelancer, you have a few limitations on you. Number one is that you are alone. You're not necessarily hiring yourself out as a consultant. You can, of course, be a consultant, but usually a consultant is a little bit of a different type of beast. But as a freelancer, you are most likely going to take on smaller to maybe mid-sized mid -size projects for small businesses or mid-sized businesses at best most commonly what you do when you do this sort of work is that you create landing pages or simple portals or product pages or things of this nature things that the sort of things where i i, I will call it i'm not going to say the low end of it but i'm going to say they are not simple things but they have a very low level of complexity. They are usually the first baby steps that a company takes. It's usually the case for any company who goes into information technology is that they start out with having some type of core company web page, some type of landing page that you know promotes their brand and their products and their selling points and all of this good stuff, right? That's the first step. Usually after that, a company will go into more advanced automation systems. That's also something that usually you hire developers to help you out with, to create more sophisticated business systems or content, content management systems, things of this nature. So for a freelancer, you are usually involved in the first stage, which is that first initial step from being a company with either one very simple, usually if I'm being honest here, a WordPress site or something like that, that they most likely built themselves into something more professional. Now, as a freelancer, front-end skills are absolutely a very important thing because usually when you make these sorts of web pages, the people who are buying your skills, is usually, they are usually looking for something that is graphically stunning. It is the sort of thing that gets people excited. It's the sort of thing that is easy to sell to a customer and a customer feels that this is a good representation of their company because that's what companies think matter at usually at that scale. That the more, the more well designed and the more beautiful their web page, the more business they're going to do. This is not necessarily always true, but that is what most of them believe. So the more excited, visually excited, you can get your customer, the more likely you are to actually get the job. Now, one thing to mention here though, is that as I was saying, this is a maybe, because the front-end skills are definitely, uh, should be on the heavy side when you're doing freelance work, if at all possible. You can, of course, go into more serious back-end work as well, but it is a very good investment for you to have strong front-end skills, since you may not always have a bigger customer around that needs more advanced back-end skills or something like that. The, these th projects that I was talking about there is usually the way that you keep yourself afloat. They're usually shorter projects and they don't, they may not pay as well as the bigger customers will, but they are going to be the norm for quite a lot of freelancers, especially in the beginning when you're just starting up your business, right? So the thing to know here is that that is not enough. You can't just learn a bit of CSS and HTML and think that that's going to keep you afloat as a freelancer. That's going to limit you quite a lot. Now, a very large amount, like I would even say that the trend is for a lot of, of design agencies, as an example, who use, like, I mean, they are basically doing the work of a freelancer in many ways, but they, and they are representing visual things and they're usually just doing the visual UI and things of this nature for a company, what they have started, this industry has started to realize is that more and more companies, they are no longer content with hiring them to do the UI and then finding backend developers or something like that to build the rest of the system because then they have two different companies or two different entities that need to collaborate that don't really have, they don't re mean they don't really have a reason to be helpful towards each other necessarily. I mean, it's the customer who wants this to work 
And now it's on the customer to make these two synchronize. So they don't want that anymore. They want a one-stop shop, they want a Walmart type of deal where they can go to one single thing, place and they can get everything. And that convenience is going from being nice to have to being basically a demand at this point. It's not always the case, but it's moving in that direction. So the freelancer now has to have more of a full stack role in many ways. Being a full stack freelancer is the safest bet for you to survive as a freelancer simply because most of your customers will not have any technical skills and they may not even have a department of backend developers who can just let you do the front end and then they do the back end. I mean, if you have what I described where you're leaning towards stronger front end skills, but you still have the back end skills, then you are fairly flexible here. So you could take a, an exclusive front end, front end role for one project and then be a full stack on the next one. But the full stack thing I think is very important for you, at least to have a basic understanding of it so that you can build systems because it is more likely that your customer is going to want you to build the whole system. They're going to want you to be a know, know everything type of person where you take the projects from the design stage where you help the, the customer design the website, you produce mock-ups or things of this nature, they sign off on it, they feel like this looks like the thing that they want and then you have to code it and then you have to deploy it and host it and like set everything up just so and then do some type of handoff that is going to be most likely the best bet for you. So what I want you to take away from this is that for a freelancer to be a front end exclusive type of person is not the best idea because it limits you quite a lot in the sort of work that you can do. But you should lean towards being very good at front end. You need to be a full stack developer with a fairly strong focus on front end skills if you're going to make the most amount of money and have the biggest likelihood to land customers at different levels of, uh, of the food chain within IT. Because usually the way that a freelancer survives is through either joining up with some project for a big customer and doing some part of it and going in and doing something right, or most of the time working with smaller to mid-sized companies who are just kind of starting going into this IT thing and they need to create a corporate website or a product portfolio or some basic CMS type of thing for something internal or things of this nature. And most of the time you get these people excited through a visual representation of something. So if you have a really striking portfolio of amazing websites that you have made that look absolutely beautiful, that's the sort of thing that goes over very well with new customers that are in the low to mid-sized company size. Have a great day.